So, to, um, to travel astrally, um, it's very important to understand the principles of astral travel. Um, as I said before, you can move up or down and uh, you have a certain range and that range is ultimately dependent on how your own ability to manipulate your own astral energy is. So if you think happy thoughts you will tend to go up, if you think heavy thoughts you will tend to go down. And ultimately we all have a certain vibrational range which we uh, move into. And the biggest blockage is usually our sense of self, our ego, uh, because certain things cannot move with us to higher levels. So as long as our ego is very strong, and is in a way holding our consciousness, our range astrally is going to be quite, quite small. So the e ego has to be flexible or willing to let go of the spirit so that it can move freely through the astral world. To um, do that, we also need to change our consciousness. So while we are identified with the body and with the here and the now, um, all the energies we can project are also connected with this world, this planet, this body. Um, so ultimately our range is quite limited. And this is why most people's dream spaces tend not to be very collective or just bordering the collective rather than going deeply into it. But if we practice ourselves with dreams, and dreams is a state where we can also accept things which are normally impossible, like you don't fly and dragons don't exist, and, um, but in dreams they can. And this, in a way, more accepting state of just allowing things to be the way they are also helps us to cross over into a more collective space where we can open up to also other people's imagination, other people's ideas. So this is really the first step to uh, astral travel, to develop our uh, conscious dreaming and then move from just conscious dreaming into collective dreaming. So once we're on this level of collective dreaming, we can start meeting things. And uh, often we will meet our guides or um, other yeah, powers which are very present in the region. Uh, so maybe your house spirit or uh, family members might play an important role in your dreams. And you can get known within this yeah, collective dream space. And Next time you visit that space, you will be recognized and people will say, Hey, how are you doing? Long time no see. Um, and you can more or less uh, yeah, build up a social life uh, in your dreams or in the astral world. Um, the social life can get more complicated and more complex if you start to join egregores. Um, because normally we just move according to our own energy. So if I have a high energy I will move to a high world, if I have a low energy I will move to a low world. So low energies tend to lead to nightmares, high energies tend to lead to very blissful dreams. Um, but at the moment that we become connected with a certain higher power, and this can be a god or a goddess or a saint, a master, an egregore, then um, that energy is going to be within us and as soon as we in a way step out of our body this energy is acting like a magnet and pulling us towards yeah, the power that we've been initiated with. So I can get pulled into an egregore or pulled to a god or a goddess or my master or uh, a saint uh, who I've been working with. So what energies are active in us on a spiritual level also very much determine uh, the quality of our astral travels. So the cases where you just have a connection with a god or a goddess or a master, they're relatively easy um, because energy tends to flow from high to low and higher powers, at least in the light cosmos, they tend to feel it as a, a 
know, a duty to help beings with on a lower cosmos. So these are generally very positive experiences where they give some of their power, their light, their insight, their wisdom, their healing uh, to you so that you can go back uh, enriched after your astral journey. An egregore, however, is um, you could say much more a tool for a specific purpose. And if you're part of that group, and also to a lesser degree, also deities of course have a purpose, uh, you also become a tool. So there's in a way an upside and a downside to it. The upside is that um, a lot of knowledge and power is stored there, so they're accessible to you. Incarnation after incarnation, you don't have to invent the wheel yourself. You can just pick up your bags where you left them and continue where you left off. If you're still in alignment with that egregore and you're still agreeing with their principles and their purpose. And the same with deities. Um, also there's a lot of knowledge there and there can already be a pre-existing relationship depending both on your bloodline and on your own previous incarnations. So both types of link are, are, are honored by the, by the gods and um, yeah, it can really give you a, a head start in, uh, in life to uh, work with these powers, but usually after you've, in a way, caught up a little bit and got them back to your previous level, uh, then it's time to forge ahead. And then often the forging ahead is not just personal development, but also helping the deity or um, helping the, uh, the egregore to accomplish what they want. And uh, then it is not only about receiving, but it also becomes about giving, about also taking the same role of taking care of people who might need your light, your strength, your insight. And these dreams can be extremely exhausting, I have to say. Uh, it can be quite hard work if you have to work during the day and then work again in your dreams during the night, and it can really drain you. Um, so I would definitely also say for people who are starting to get into this astral travel, uh, try not to do it more than twice a week, um, because uh, astral travel is quite intense on the energy body. There's a lot of high vibrations, a lot of impulses and energies, and your physical body has to learn to respond to this, how to react to this, how to move together with these higher powers. and. It has a learning curve and it becomes easier over time but especially in the beginning it can be quite exhausting and people can actually get quite stressed on a physical level when they start with their um, astral journeys and their astral experiments. Um, a little bit about the, the, the problems or the dangers when we're astrally projecting. Um, one of them is that the body is left behind relatively unprotected because your consciousness is not there. Another problem is that um, you tend to create blockages. There are guardians at thresholds, both the guardians you create yourself out of your own fear, your own survival instinct, your own ego. Um, then there's also the thresholds implied by yeah, planetary energies. If your consciousness cannot transcend them, then they, you, you can get into a conflict with them if you try to go too far too fast. Um, and the other problem is that if you start to do astral travel while your own energy is not in a very light vibration, you can go to really nasty places where really nasty things live. So with astral travel, uh, it is a little bit similar to prayer. It, it works like a magnet. You attract what you have in you. So do it when yeah, you feel good and also when the area around you is safe. So your body won't get attacked by energetic parasites or other things while you're out. Um, you can also create, for instance, a, um, a magical circle, a ritual circle to put your body in. Or you can get somebody to watch or you can uh, burn a candle to harmonize the energy and to keep the energy clean in the room so no negative energies can build up while you're traveling and 
then uh, harm your uh, your body. So some precautions need to be taken when you're doing astral traveling, but uh, I can hardly recommend it because the views you get and how spirits look at things, um, it's really quite liberating to see things from the perspective of not having an ego. So good luck out there and enjoy your travels.